there you all are. What am I looking at now? It's a Royal Enfield, isn't it? Yeah, but what kind of Royal Enfield is it? Well, let's have a look. It is a Mark 1A interceptor. If I can get out of my own shadow, um, pussycat. It's a Mark 1A interceptor, and they're, they're rare, probably the rarest of the lot. Uh, the total production of these was 759 before they went on to the Mark IIs. So um, they're a rare bike, and I imported this from America uh, late last year, early part of this year. Uh, it came from Baxter Cycles in I Marnie, Iowa. And uh, it was quite a road journey to get it to New York docks, but uh, it wasn't cheap and the shipping wasn't cheap but I wanted one of these and this one is a one owner bike and it hasn't been run since 1969 it's a 1967 model he ran it for a couple of years and then parked it up in a collection and it's sat since then uh, it has deteriorated obviously um, you can see it in places but um, yeah, it's, it's, um, what can I tell you about it? Let's have a look at the mileage. 12,247. That's what mileage it's done. And that's supposed to be genuine. Well, it is genuine because it's all on the title. You know, on the American titles, they're obsessed with mileage. There's, there's a couple of pages devoted to it. Um, yeah, so, anyway, I think the guy died and the, uh, his widow sold a, a part of his collection off and um, Baxter Cycles bought this one and um, I bought it off them but uh, it's like I say it's, a, it's pretty original the handlebars are, are wider than standard but the right pattern and they'll get changed the seat is the wrong one he's obviously changed the seat um, it is a complete restoration project and it will get done but I'm not going to start it until I've got some of my other projects done. I've got one project that I'm working on. I need to get that finished. Bring, let me just to show you this front tyre. I've never seen a front tyre like that, where they've got the tread halfway around the wall. How, how, how far do you reckon they're going to lean it? It's definitely got chicken strips on it. And they run out before that tread. So, I can't even see what it is. Oh, it's a good year. It's a Goodyear Super Eagle, that's what it is. Never heard of it. Oh, that's gone hard, that tyre. Oh, <laughs> it's like a fossil. But, uh, yeah, that'll definitely be getting new tyres. But, uh, yeah, that's a rear one. Oh, I can see it's full of cracks. <laughs> it's also um, a Goodyear, but it's an all-terrain. It looks like all cracks to me, but there we are. It's got mountains of tread on it, but um, it's, it's old and tired. Oh, yeah, this is always so hard. You wouldn't want to be riding this on the road. Not with them tyres, anyway. But they're, they're Trade Dunlop brims, which is, uh, they're all stamped type Trade Dunlop, so they're nice. They'll get re-chromed, um, rather than put new rims on. What's the point? You'll just lose all its original detail and that. Um, yeah, so this is the second model of Interceptor they brought out. It was built at Bradford upon Avon, Westwood Factory, not Redditch. Um, only the Mark 1s were built at Redditch. These were all built in Bradford upon Avon. What makes this different between the Constellation, which is the model which came before it? Well, as I said in the previous video, the crankcases are 500 cases. Um, they came with a 500 twin, then they went on to the Meteor Miner 500, then they went on to the Meteor 700, and uh, then the Super Meteor 700, and then the Constellation. Well, by the time it got to the Constellation, they were up to about 51 horsepower, which was too much for the crankcases. They really started to suffer. Um, and because each cylinder barrel is individual, 
And they did that so that you can get more airflow between the two cylinders for cooling. So they are individual cylinders, they're not one piece like Triumphs and BSAs. And on the Constellation, they would actually walk about. So one cylinder would go forwards and one would go, one would go backwards, you know, and the, the crankcases would walk about and cause all kinds of oil leaks, which earned them the nickname of Royal Oil Field, which is a bit unkind, but they are, it's probably true. Um, the Constellation would also have a tendency to um, blow head gaskets. It was getting a bit too much. So how they like, sorted that out with the interceptor, because they are new barrels, different barrels for, from the um, Constellation. They machined a, a chamfer in the top of the bores, right at the very tops of the bores. And um, it takes a triangular like a piston ring, which is a ceiling ring. And um, that takes the place of a head gasket. So they have no head gasket on those, and they're not renowned for blowing that ring. But it's pretty, pretty hard, it's cast iron. So uh, they were working on it, they were developing it, making it better. But like I say, this one, it, this one has sat for a long, long time. Even the carburetors are seized, you can't even twist the throttles. It's, it's, I mean, it's nothing. They're just seized, the slides are seized. There's probably not a lot of wear in them, and I will free them all off. But I'm going to have to have the motor out, pull it apart, and check everything over. I know the main bearings are bad, and they need changing. Uh, I think they're 3 and 7 sixteenths inch diameter, the main bearings. There's a ball race on the drive side, and then a roller race on the timing side there. They're big bearings. But then again, when you see the crank, you'll see why. But let's not say this was redeveloped by... For, by Enfield Precision, they uh, made new tooling. The crankcases look the same as the Constellation, but they're not. They're stronger and there's more room inside them for, for the, to get the extra stroke that this has got. So, yeah, it's a development of it. Still got the Albion 4-speed box. Um, not the fastest box in the world, but it was, it was a tribute that it, it's, it stood the power from a 350 bullet right up to a, an Enfield Interceptor. Um, even in the Mark II. So there we are, it's uh, like I say, it's pretty, pretty original. Uh, it's one of two things I've spotted that are not original. Uh, there's no battery on it, no battery box, which got lost in shipping, in transit by the way. Um, it actually fell off, probably when they were loading it with a forklift, it was on a crate, and the crate was open at the bottom, but it was a, in a cardboard box, I think it was a Triumph box, I think. That they shipped it in a new Triumph box. Uh, it fell out the bottom of the crate somewhere, never to be seen again. But uh, I got in touch with Baxter's and said, you know, are you sure it was on there? And uh, no problem at all. I had a word with their, their their top brass, and they sent me another battery box free of charge, pattern one, a good one. Uh, not he didn't ever pay the postage or no duty on it or anything. It was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Baxter Cycles, Marnie, Iowa great people to deal with. So I've got a bit of chroming to do, a bit of painting to do, lots of polishing to do. <laughs> um, and Before I bought this, for about, I don't know, maybe a year, on my computer, I had a video of one of these running, and it's absolutely immaculate. And it's a blue one, and it's really nice. And I'll, I'll, every now and then I'd watch that and listen to it and think, yeah, I'm going to have one of them. Well, one of my subscribers, I clicked on his name and um, he subscribed and I clicked on his name to see if he's got a YouTube channel. And blame me if it wasn't the guy that I saved the video from. And we've had a little bit of a conversation over on um, timing interceptors and stuff like that because he's got electronic ignition on, on his. And he's still got it. But I'll put a link in his chat in the in the description of this video. Uh, click on his channel. You can actually hear what one of these sound like. Um, and I've noticed something else since I got it out this, today. <coughs> the silencers. There's no perforated tubes in them, either side. They're just straight open. And his sounds absolutely gorgeous. But my Mark 1, 
Oh, sorry, my Mark II A, uh, Mark II A, I'll get it right in a minute. Well, I think what I'm doing, my Mark II has got patent silencers on it and they're a good bit quieter. But I've just noticed that they've got perforated tubes in the patent ones, uh, whereas the original ones don't. That's interesting. I thought I'd learnt something today. Yeah, so I say the seat isn't standard, it says replacements. I don't know why he's put that one on there, but it's comfortable, but it is coming off. I've got a new seat. You can buy all that uh, in this country. So that's going on. Um, there's a bit of, like I say, uh, the tank will get re repainted, but they're the original factory lines on there, original factory paint. Um, donkey's years old. But uh, it deserves to, a better life than to be. Uh, put in a collection after two years of its life. Um, it's got the original aluminium centre stand which is uh, very prone to wear. You have to build them up with weld, aluminium weld on the feet to because they get so they won't pick the back wheel off the ground in the end. But um, yeah, it's, it's what it is. I'm looking forward to doing it but I'm not going to do it until I'm sort of um, clear, to, clear to do it and see it all the way through. I don't like starting projects and then getting them half finished and starting another one. Um, yeah, I've only go back to the old camera, so I apologise now for any bad images, bad audio. But I've bought a GoPro 10 and it should be with me by Friday, this Friday. So my next video should be shot on a GoPro 10, so hopefully the audio will be better and also um, the images, because uh, this is awful, I know it is, it's, 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 I've, the, this is, I'm back on my original camera now because the other one, I've just shot a video, I've just shot this video once and I've downloaded it on some computer, I had a look at it and it's awful, it's absolutely blurred and, um, and more cats. Yeah, I'm sure the cat comes out because it wants to go on any, one of these bikes. It seems remarkably interested in it all. Yeah. So, there we are. Um, what else can I tell you about it? Typical Royal Enfield chain case held on with one bolt in the middle. And they've got a nice big O-ring that runs around the outside of the outer chain case and that seals it. And it works. It works on all of them. Um, all the hard to find bits are there, um, so it's not, it's not, it's just a case of, of, of restoring the bike. It's a straightforward restoration project and, uh, and a rebuild of the engine. I'll have the gearbox apart as well and check everything in there. Um, the petrol pipes are as gone as hard as anything. Oh, God, that are hard. Oof. No giving those at all. And. Um, Look at the size of the breather pipe that runs up out of the back of the, the oil tank there. It's massive. That was one of the improvements they did. Put a great big piece of pipe on it so it could breathe. Stop trying to stop oil leaks. And these are not renowned for oil leaks. And the serial number of this engine is a YC. I don't know if you can make that out. It's probably all blurry, but it's a YC model. Um, it's matching engine frame numbers with the factory records, so it's dead right. Um, it, it, it deserves being restored, and it's going to get restored. Um, these funny rings on the front brake, uh, Royal Enfield described those as cooling rings. <laughs> well, I don't think the front brake ever did get hot, because <laughs> they're not wonderful, but um, I think they're more decorative. Makes it look like it's got a big front brake in it from a distance. But um, yeah, it's just a little touch, and, and they're normally they're all missing, or one of them's missing. I don't know why. I suppose people get a puncher and uh, take take one off, or the do the screws up and they drop off. But um, yeah, so this is um, now. Let me get this right. This is a GP model. It, yeah, that's right. It's a GP model because it's got the enclosed shock absorbers on it with the chrome covers top and bottom where the TT version there's, there's, you can see the springs top to bottom um, and it's also got the painted tank which is a giveaway uh, where the TT had a chrome tank um, I've got a chrome tank for one of these and I'm reluctant to put it on because I've got the Mark 1A sorry the Mark 2 with a chrome tank 
and I've also got the new interceptor with the chrome tank and I mean how many chrome tanks do you want? They all start looking the same after a while. So I'd like to keep this, this is a panel tank with the chrome panels on the side. Uh, it's different, I haven't got a bike with those on anywhere. Um, so I'll keep that as it is and do it in its original colours. Um, mud guards, they're very light Norton. They've got the raised um, the raised lip on the outside, which is a trait of Norton as well. Um, I mean the Mark II's use Norton bits, I mean they used uh, the front forks in the Mark, in the Mark II, they're, they're Norton's dominator forks, or, or the road holder forks, or the development of them. And uh, interestingly, um, they're under the control of uh, Norton Villiers Triumph then. When the Commando got a disc brake, the twin leading shoe front brake that um, uh, Norton's had, or it was an option on Norton's. It got the single leading shoe in the Mark II's, so it's a Norton front wheel and Norton forks in the, in the Mark II. I don't know if I mentioned that in the last video, in or the video I made about that. But um, yeah, th these did have a little problems as well, little things. I mean, if you rev these more than six thousand revs, the oil pump, f the oil feed pump, will cavitate which means it draws in air rather than oil and if you put an oil pressure gauge on well any of the in, uh, any of the Royal Enfields really the twins and rev them hard you'll see the oil pressure go right down to nothing so the secret is don't rev them after about five and a half thousand really it's got plenty of go in them that, below that you don't need to wring its neck not in this day and age they'll go really well I say 120 mile or 125 mile an hour bike. So uh, yeah, just little things you should know about Royal Enfields. Don't over rev them; they'll live a lot longer. Because once you start with the crank, it ain't gonna last long. But it's just in the design of the little piston pumps, the reciprocating piston pumps. They just can't cope with that kind of speed. Um, Royal Enfield did try to develop a different pump, but if, in the end they went back to these. They, they, they couldn't find anything that was successful that would fit in the cases they've got without spending a million pounds on development. So, um, anyway, they do well. They do, they're not a problem under normal use. But anyway, I just thought I'd make this video. It's, uh, it's just a, a different bike. It's a rare bike. You don't see very many on the road. I've never seen one on the road, not even at bike shows, not a Mark 1A. I've seen all kinds of other things, but um, not a Mark 1A. So, um, yeah, like Royal Enfield said, not everybody can have one, there's not enough to go around, because they were literally hand building them in the factory, which is part of their downfall, really. I've got an upcoming video coming, uh, talk, where I'm talking about uh, why Royal Enfield Interceptor was killed off and shut down, the Enfield Precision was shut down. Why? And it's not for the reason you think. But I'm not going to go into it because I'm going to spoil the video, aren't I? But if you're interested in that. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say? I've had a mate come over and he's a lot more computer savvy than I am. And he's poking around uh, looking at my YouTube channel and he's gone into analytics and stuff like that. And I don't, I don't understand any of it. This is all beyond me, really. But um, And he's trying to explain to me, he said, do you know how many people watch your videos that are not subscribed to your channel? And I said, I don't know, a fair few of them, I suppose, uh, watch, are subscribers. He said, 97.7% of, of the people that watch your videos are not subscribed. And I said, oh, right, well, that's, they don't have to, do they? And he said, well, the trouble is, he said, with the YouTube algorithm, whatever that is, the more comments you get, the more likes you get, the more views you get, the more you, the YouTube algorithm puts it in front of people on their live feed so they can see, oh, well, that looks a bit interesting video, I'll watch that. Otherwise, it doesn't do that. If, you, if you, nobody watches your videos and nobody likes them and nobody comments, they go nowhere. Nobody sees them. Um, so, if you do like what I'm doing, and you don't, you don't have to, but it would be really nice if you did subscribe. 
because I've got 126 subscribers I think as at last time I looked which is absolutely amazing um, I hope I'm doing something right I'm not holding this camera right I know that I'm looking at the bike not, the, not what I'm filming that'll all change when I get the GoPro but you can see it's not UK registered yet I haven't got round to doing that and that looks like a pattern rear light glass I think that, that was missing when I bought it and Baxter's have put one on but it's got damaged in transit so um, mm, yeah I like this bike and I'm looking forward to getting it done and uh, and I will get it done but um, mm, yes right okay on that note I'm uh, have you pressed that subscribe button yet? Go and have a go. Then you'll get notifications of when I put something else up, if you're interested. But anyway, thanks ever so much for dropping in. Really appreciate the visit and like your viewing. It's great. Thank you very much. Catch you on the next one. Bye.